Hello guys and welcome to this session. Well, a very big and wholehearted congratulations for you on having taken this particular exam of IIT Mains 2018 today for which many of you would be preparing from such a great long time. So congratulations. Well, yesterday itself IPL started and this particular exam happened to be a big hindrance towards that, isn't it? Well, yesterday, Chennai Super Kings, that was Dhoni one, and I personally like him a lot. How many of you all are fans of Dhoni? Well, I am, and now I am really happy because of you that today, as the exam is over, you can enjoy this India Ka Tyohar, that's IPL. Well, getting back to the discussion, we are here to discuss about this IIT JE Mains 2018 mathematics section. Here, in this particular paper, I am right now holding a test booklet code C. So those of you who have set C can sit with their papers and rest of you all can just keep on tallying the questions. I would be discussing the analysis of the paper as well as the answer keys. Okay? If I talk about this time 2018, J main paper, there was a dip in the number of students who sat to take the paper this time. As compared to the 13 lakh students who sat last year, there was close to 12 lakh students who sat this year to take this paper. But on the other hand, number of centers increased drastically. 258 centers were given for this particular paper as opposed to 113 centers which happened to be last year. Well, you all are aware that out of 12 lakh students who sat for this paper, only 2.24 lakh students would be eligible to take the JE Advanced Paper 2018, which is scheduled to be held on 20th May 2018. Going back to this mathematics section, you all are aware there were 30 questions, 120 marks, 4 marks for each correct response, minus 1 for each bad response, that is wrong response. And no negative marking for not at all attempting the question, right? If I analyze the paper from 2014, it was pretty easy as graded. 15, again pretty easy. 16, moderate. 17, it was graded to be difficult. And 18, I would say, I was telling you 2014 paper was pretty easy. 15, easy. 16, moderate. 17, graded to be difficult. And 18, as I can say, was moderately easy. But yes, calculations involved a lot of time and that made the paper pretty lengthy. And I'm sure you would have confronted that. But on the other note, if I talk about the weightage of the sections, which it has been going on from such a long time from the past years, did not get violated even this year. If I talk about the four units in which the entire syllabus of mathematics is divided, which is algebra, happening to be the largest weightage unit, then it was calculus, coordinate geometry and trigonometry. Algebra, where 35% out of 100% is the weightage which algebra holds as the highest. And this year also, 11 questions were asked from the algebra unit, which was the greatest. Secondly, calculus holds 32.64% and coordinate geometry in general has been holding 25.33%, as I have told you in my analysis video as well. And this time, that was also not violated. Because calculus and coordinate this time came to be of equal number of questions, 8 each. Moving to the trigonometry, 7%, that's the least percentage weightage was given to this particular section. And this time again, that was justified. There was just three questions from trigonometry. Solutions of triangles was there. But let me tell you, inverse trigonometric functions was not there in the paper this time. Well, that's a wonder for me. But yeah, I really like that particular chapter. It was not there in the unit. Now that we have discussed that the weightage which has been there in the previous years was not violated even this time, let's move on to discussing the code C answer keys for the mathematics section. Well, talking about the very first or I would say the 31st question which talks about the integration, okay? So coming from the 12th standard syllabus integration was the chapter from which the first question was put. There was this trigonometric expression whose integration you were supposed to find, calculation involving, and here 31st question had 
the first option as the correct one, not the second, not the third, not the fourth. Moving on to the next conic sections, which again happens to be the greatest weightage holding topic every time, every year. From the 11th standard syllabus, this particular topic, this particular question involved the very equation of tangent to the hyperbola. You were already given the equation of the hyperbola. And just by this very, very tiny nitty gritty concepts about hyperbola and its tangents, you could have been able to easily accomplish the correct answer to this question, which was the fourth option. Moving on to the 33rd question, again conic section, see how important that was this time as well, which was this time asked on the parabola, y square equals 16 x was given to you as standard equation of the parabola, what easier could you have got than this? And this question's answer is the first option. Moving to the 34th from vector algebra, which is a chapter in the 12th standard you have studied. This particular question was asked and you were given a vector coplanar with two vectors. And the question's answer was the fourth option. 35th, well, complex equations and quadratic equations, complex numbers and quadratic equations, 11th standard chapter. This particular here has been giving you alpha and beta complex numbers which are happening to be distinct roots of a certain equation which eventually gives, gives you the direct information about the discriminant of this equation and which would have led you to the correct answer which is the second option. Moving on to the next 36th area under curves that is what it concerns with 12th standard chapter. And here you are given functions and over here you are also been given composition of functions g o f. Still the question is asking you to compute the area under the curve. That means this beautiful question is blending two concepts which was functions and area under curves. This particular question's answer was the fourth option. After this, moving on to 37th, this particular question's answer, which is the question, the sum of the coefficients of all odd degree terms in the given expression was option number three. Thirty-eighth question coming from the sequences and series section 11 standard syllabus. This question's solution was option number two. Moving on to the next statistics, direct question, pretty easy, just know the formula, compute the answer. It is the second option which is the correct option for question number 39. Moving on to 40th, well as I told you trigonometry solutions of triangle happened to be a very important chunk from which the questions were posed. Here. From trigonometry, you are getting this 40th question, which has fourth option as its correct one. Pretty simple concepts of angle of elevation were asked in this question and just a concept, concept clarity would have given you the marks. Next, we have 41st question, which is from sets and relations, which is, you know, it is always asked in the mains paper. It's no wonder that it is there as the 41st question. It has first option as the correct option. Moving on to 42nd, permutations and combinations. Pretty nice question this time from the 11th standard syllabus holds fourth option as the correct one. Moving on to the 43rd question, application of derivatives, pretty nice applicable part of mathematics I would say. From the 11th standard syllabus, we have to find the local minimum value of the function which is a nice you know, understandable concept which you could have done to get the correct answer of this question which is option number 3. Then we have 44th question coming from the limit section which holds the limit to be equal to 120 and not 15, not 0 and definitely it does not exist. That's not the correct option. The correct option is that the limit of this expression is equal to 120 which happens to be the second option. 
Moving on to the next, which is 45th, a definite integration portion question, which was 12th standard. Then you have the value of this particular integral from minus pi by 2, pi by 2, you are supposed to calculate, which has come out to be pi by 4. Okay, so this particular question 45th has option 3 as the correct one. We are right now solving our C test booklet code that is C. Fine. Now that we have understood this, let's move on to the next question, which is 46th question. 46th question is from the probability section, which is asking you a very basic classic probability question. This particular pattern is repeatedly asked all over the years in the mains section, which is classic probability. This holds 2 by 5 as the correct probability, which is the option number 1 for 46th question. Moving on to the 47th question. So let me just note it down that we are right now working on the answer keys for test booklet code C. Fine. So as we are dealing with this particular booklet answers, do not get confused with the answers of the A, B or D booklet. Right. So now let's moving on to the 47th question, which is from 3D geometry. Again, a big chunk of coordinate geometry coming from the 12th standard syllabus is asking you the length of the projection of the line segment joining two points on a certain plane. Direct usage of concept of planes. Nothing great, nothing topsy-turvy, nothing which is twisting over here. The answer was straight root 2 by root 3, which is root over 2 by 3, which happens to be the third option in this particular question. Well, so 47th holds the third option as its correct one. Next we have 48th again trigonometry. It is related to the trigonometric equations part coming from the 11th standard which has first option as the correct option. Forty-ninth question, let's visit what it is. It's again from coordinate geometry. I told you there were 11 questions coming from this particular chunk. So this is Eight questions I would say. Straight lines from 11th standard is asking you that a straight line through a fixed point intersects the coordinate axis at distinct two points P and Q. If O is the origin and rectangle OPRQ is completed then the locus of R is what? Well we would be discussing the detailed solutions of these questions right in the next video but right now you are advised to just keep a note and track of the answer keys and to this question it's the second option which holds to be the correct one and therefore 49th question second option is the correct one. I hope you're marking well do not loosen your heart just keep track of what are the correct answers and keep on marking that. Then we are now on the 50th question sequences and series section 11 standard syllabus here 248 which stands to be the first option is coming out as the answer of the given expression which is asking you to compute the value of lambda by using what is given to you so the value of lambda comes out over here as 248 so 50th holds first option as the correct one Moving on to 51st, again conic sections, 11th standard. Here you are given very beautifully two curves which are intersecting each other at right angles. So here I would even say the angle of intersection formula would also have been used by you. You could have gone to that particular section as well to, you know, just apply your brains and solve the question out because it is clearly giving you this line intersecting each other at right angles. That means the slope of these two lines is minus one, isn't it? So here, this particular question delivers the answer as 9 by 2. So 51st question, 9 by 2, which is the second option, happens to be the correct one, okay? Moving on to 52nd, well, here 3 multiplied by root 5 by root 2 is the correct answer to this particular question, which is happening to be the second option. So 52nd question, second option is the correct one, fine. Moving to the 53rd which is a differentiability concept based. It is basically a question having phi as the correct answer that is an empty set. The set that is given to you comes out to be equal to an empty set. No element is sitting inside it, 
fine and that is what is the fourth option so 53rd fourth option is the correct one 54th well here uh, this determinant is given to you and here what is this trying to say this is asking you then the ordered pair a comma b is equal to what the answer is the ordered pair so 53rd question as I told you holds fourth option as the correct one moving to the 54th here determinant is given to you and you are asked to compute the value of this ordered pair a comma b which holds to be minus 4 comma 5 as the correct answer which is the second option for the 54th question. Moving to the next which is 55th mathematical reasoning a topic which is just there's a tradition of this being asked. You all are aware this topic is not in JE advanced syllabus but there in JE mains. It's holding here to be sitting in 55th question which has fourth option that's not P negation of P statement which is the correct one and so 55th fourth option holds to be the correct one. I hope you all have marked it correctly. It's very, very easy, right? Moving to the next, that's 56th. Here, this system of linear equations given to you, this has a non-zero solution x comma y comma z, then x z upon y square is equal to what? And the answer is it's equal to 10. And so, first option happens to be the correct one for this. Moving to the next, that's 57th. Well, this particular question, I would say, is from the set theory as well and is asking you to compute the solution of this equation given to you as well, which is going to give you the x's which are satisfying this equation, which in turn is going to give you s contains how many elements, right? So, here s is going to contain, you're going to get it contains exactly two elements, which happens to be the second option, which is the correct one for this question. And therefore, 57th. Second option is the correct one. Moving to 58th, again conic sections. Well, you can see how this topic is being repeatedly asked in the paper. Conic sections, 11 standard syllabus, again tangent at 1 comma 7 ordered pair to the curve touches the circle, then the value of C is what? Again, direct usage of concept. This particular question is holding option number 3. That's 95 is the value of C as the correct option. And therefore, 58th you have three, that is the third option correct one. Moving to the next at 59th, differential equations from 12th standard syllabus is giving you a differential equation and it is asking you y of pi by 6 will be equal to what? The answer is it will be equal to minus 8 by 9 pi square, which is sitting as the second option in this particular set of options. And so 59th question accounts to have second option as its correct one. The last very question in this mathematics section again from 3D geometry which is from 12th standard syllabus and this question is having its answer 1 upon 3 into root 2. Again from the plane section and so this has option number 1 as the correct one. If I talk about the questions that we have discussed, if I talk about what was the weightage from the 11th and the 12th, there were approximately some 16 to 17 questions which were asked from the 11th standard syllabus and some 14 to 13 questions approximately from 12th, which makes the weightage a 50-50 scenario, right? Well, this was all about the answer keys and the analysis of mathematics paper. You all have marked the answer keys now and you are there with how much marks have you scored. Enjoy the IPL and those who are scoring really nice can prepare themselves for JE Advanced. All the very best. That's it from my side. Thank you so much and take care.